हेलो एवरी वन सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी लंबर स्पाइन एक्सरे इंटरप्रिटेशन बेजिक्स एंड बियॉन्ड बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द इंटरप्रिटेशन पार्ट वी विल लर्न अबाउट द बेजिक्स ऑफ एक्सरे सो वॉट इज एक्सरे इट इज अ इनविजिबल इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन इट इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ लाइट और इन इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन विच इज इनविजिबल टू द ह्यूमन आई वी कैनॉट सी द एक्सरेज एक्सरेज अव अ वेरी शॉर्टर वेव लेंथ एंड दे आर वेरी high energy particles so if we talk about the uses of x ray it is used for the imaging of bones soft tissues uh, internal tissues and organs right so basic x rays are used for the imaging of bones we can get a image of bone but we cannot get a image of soft tissue due to less density now x rays works on a principle x ray absorption works on a principle of density of the object here objects are the bones and soft tissue right so what is basic principle if the object has a very high density then it will absorb large amount of radiation and if the object has a very less density then it will absorb less amount of radiation now if we talk about the density of bone then bone has a very high density so it will absorb large amount of radiation and it will appear as a bright white shadow on the एक्सरे फिल्म एंड इफ वी टॉक अबाउट सॉफ्ट इश्यू दैन इट इज इट एज अ वेरी लेस डेंसिटी सो इट विल एब्जॉर्ब लेस एक्सरेज और इट मे नॉट एब्जॉर्ब एक्सरे राइट सो इट विल अपियर एज अ शेड्स ऑफ ग्रे ऑन द एक्सरे फिल्म ना वाई एक्सरेज आर यूज एक्सरेज आर यूज टू असेस द बोन प्रॉपर्टीज फॉर द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ सर्टन बोन रिलेटेड इश्यूज एंड डिसऑर्डर्स टू आइडेंटिफाई द बोन फ्रैक्चर्स टू आइडेंटिफाई बोन इमेस एलेगमेंट्स एंड to assess the bone density so sum, summing up all the things we are using x-ray for the imaging of the bone soft tissue cannot be uh, visible on the x-ray film because of less density high density components will be visible on the x-rays like uh, metals and bones and uh, with ob- yes here are the density chart high density will absorb great amount of x-ray and it will appear as a white on the film low density tissue like lungs will absorb less x rays and it will appear as a black on the film right and intermediate density tissues like a muscle and fat will appear as a shades of gray on the x ray film due to intermediate density there are some soft tissues and there are some tissues with a very less density so it has a intermediate density here is the resulting gray scale image on the x ray so air will appear as the dark structure air will appear dark or a black color fat and soft tissue will appear as a shades of gray bone and metal will appear as a white shadow right metal will appear more whitish than the bone due to high density so you can easily differentiate uh, in the x ray like you can differentiate air fat soft tissue bone and metal as per its density high density object more absorption less density less absorption now introduction to the lumbar spine x ray what are the indication for lumbar spine x ray low back pain which is the very most common indication of lumbar spine x ray right then birth defect then arthritis and degenerative changes so these both are the common cause of low back pain and x ray may be required for the diagnosis then osteoporosis then abnormal curvature of the spine that is scoliosis fractures deformities and cancer focal or localized cancer of the bone x-rays are used for these things indications now before going into the x-ray interpretation or learning the x-ray anatomy we will learn about the normal anatomy of the lumbar spine right first of all we should know the normal part then we will go for the x-ray part then we will learn about the abnormal x-rays right now there are total five lumbar vertebrae in human body right lumbar vertebrae is the largest vertebral body large vertebral body as compared to other vertebrae then if we talk about the anatomy from superior view we can look for the body of the vertebral vertebra uh, so it is a very large vertebral body spinal canal Through which spinal cord will pass? Then uh, superior articular facets, transverse process, and 
spinous process and if we look from the lateral side of the body right then we will look for the pedicle body lamina inferior and superior radicular process transverse process and spinous process right so these are the structures of the lumbar vertebrae okay so the center of the vertebral body will be made up of cancellous bone and there will be a cortical rim rim surround the vertebral body right and if we look from the side then it will appear as a hourglass shape the body will appear as a hourglass shape now what are the ligaments of lumbar spine the, that is anterior longitudinal ligament on the anterior side of vertebral body then a posterior longitudinal ligament on the posterior side of vertebral body then ligament of flavum blue color then interspinal ligament which is green in color here and a supraspinous ligament which is the posterior most ligament present on the spinous process now every x ray has a different views right so here the lumbar spine x ray have a different views total four views are there so four views can be available first is frontal view second is lateral view third is oblique view and the fourth is flexion extension view right in which frontal view and lateral view are commonly prescribed okay so let's talk about the frontal view first frontal view means we are projecting the x-ray from the frontal side or the anterior side so the x-rays will travel from anterior to posterior direction right and we will get a frontal view x-ray so during interpretation of frontal view we have to count the lumbar vertebra right it is important to count all the lumbar vertebras we can use two methods first is find the sacrum and count up then second method is find the last rib 12th rib and count down we can use either of this method right okay so let's use first method first of all we have to find the sacrum here is the sacrum right then we have to count in upward direction like this l5 l4 l3 l2 and l1 and there is a second method we have to look for the 12th rib or a t12 thoracic 12th vertebra right last rib will be present on 12th thoracic vertebra and we have to count in a downward direction l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 so we can use either of this method now we have to look for certain bony landmarks in frontal view here is the list of visible structures or a bony landmarks in the frontal view right let's first talk about the vertebral body in frontal view here you can see there is a large vertebral body first of all look for the vertebral body in frontal view yes these are the vertebral bodies right then you have to look for the transverse process which will be present on both the side of vertebral body here is the transverse process which is horizontally directed on both the side then there is a pedicle you have to look for the pedicle which will appear as a round shape structure so pedicle will not be clearly visible in the frontal view it is clearly visible in lateral view we will discuss it later these round shape structures are pedicle right uh so between both the pedicle there will be a vertebral foramen right vertebral foramen will be present between both the pedicles we have to just assume it that there will be a vertebral foramen between pedicles it will not be visible in the x-ray right through which spinal cord will pass okay here is the vertebral canal from which spinal cord will pass canal here you can see a two vertical lines between two pedicles it's a vertebral canal then there is a neural foramen which is again not visible in the frontal view but we have to just assume it okay so nerves will pass below the pedicles right here in image so here you can see a white dotted lines that is a neural foramen through which nerves will pass and will supply to the lower limb muscles okay here is the you can see a white dotted vertical line which is representing the neural foramen which is present between the upper and lower pedicles of adjacent vertebras then there is a spinous process it will appear like this tear drop shape right so these are the spinous process which is the posterior most part of the vertebra 
and there is a lamina Le again lamina will not be clearly visible in the frontal view right it is clearly visible in lateral view so we can say that two lamina will merge to form a spinous process right so this is lamina will merge to form a spinous process it is not visible in frontal view but it will be it will be present on both the side of spinous process now there is inferior articular facet which will appear as a v shaped here you can see a green image that is inferior articular facet right v shaped you can uh, demarcate a line like this so here is the inferior articular facet and there is a superior articular facet which will appear as a inverted v shape like this right so here is this superior articular facet which will appear as a inverted v shape now both the facet will merge to form a facet joint like this right inferior articular facet v shape and superior articular facet inverted v shape in center there is a facet joint right between be, between these two facets there is a facet joint yes here you can see a vertical line or a gap between the two facets that is facet joint here it is visible a thin vertical line right between two yellow arrows yes here is the more detail image of the facet joint so you have to look for certain things which we have discussed in the frontal view there are two methods to count the lumbar vertebrae in frontal view right first method is uh, find the sacrum and count up count in upward direction and the second method is find the 12th rib or a thoracic 12th vertebra and count down right now let's talk about the lateral view which is very common view we are taking we are projecting the x-rays from the lateral side right of the human body here is the anatomy of the lateral view lumbar spine we have to look for pedicle body lamina inferior articular process face inferior articular facet and superior articular process transverse process and spinous process so body is clearly visible pedicle will be clearly visible lamina will be clearly visible right and the spinous process will be clearly visible in the uh, lateral view here is the line diagram of the x ray of the lateral view right so while uh, while interpreted interpret while interpretation of the lateral view first of all you have to look for the intervertebral disc space right it is made up of intervertebral disc this space is will be filled up by the intervertebral disc so again intervertebral disc is a soft tissue which will not be appear on the x ray so it will appear as a empty space between two adjacent vertebras then you have to look for the spinous process here is the spinous process yes you can see here right here is the spinous process then you have to look for the lamina this is lamina as i have told you that uh, two lamina will merge to form a spinous process right so lamina will be present on both the side of spinous process then there is a pedicle which is present exactly behind the vertebral body right here is the pedicle here you can see a pedicle then there is a intervertebral foramen so you can see a gap or a space right between vertebral body and around the pedicle that is intervertebral foramen through which nerves will exit from the spinal cord and it will supply to the lower limb right so you have to look for the intervertebral foramen present between the two vertebras then there is a superior articular facet right here you can see a superior articular facet right like a bulb shape it is like somewhat like a bulb shape 
right then there is a inferior articular facet like this right now we can say that inferior articular process of the upper vertebra inferior articular process of the upper vertebra will join with the superior articular process of the lower vertebra and it will form a facet joint here here you can see a yellow line representing the facet joint here is the white image showing the facet joint with a yellow arrow uh, purple line you can see between the two facets so you have to look for the facet joint then there is a pars interarticularis so it's a point right it is formed by four components it is formed by four components superior articular facet lamina inferior articular facet and pedicle so it is a very important point pars interarticularis we will discuss its importance later right so it will be formed by a pedicle superior articular facet inferior articular facet and lamina it is present somewhat here right okay so it was all about uh, lateral view it is easy to count the lumbar vertebrae in lateral view right first of all you have to find the sacrum then you have to count up now let's talk about the oblique view which is less commonly used right it is generally used for in case of a spondylo uh, in case of a squatted ox sign we will discuss it later okay so we are projecting the x-rays from the oblique side of the body and it will provide this view oblique view now oblique view is somewhat hard to interpret but uh, yes there is one sign called a squatted dog appearance right so we have to look for a squatted dog sign here you can see a dog shaped structure which is formed by a components of the lumbar vertebra if we if we watch the lumbar vertebra from the oblique side then we can see a superior articular facet transverse process inferior articular facet and a facet joint right if we look closely then we can we can easily differentiate different structures okay here is the oblique view image this is how you can get a oblique view x ray okay so here you can see this structure like like a dog shape right that is called a squatted dog so in oblique view you have to look for the squatted dog most important sign the squatted dog is will be made up of transverse process pedicle superior articular facet inferior articular facet lamina spinous process and pars interarticularis right so here you have to make a line on the squatted dog appearance okay so what is the importance of squatted dog so it is representing certain structures right okay so what it represents the nose of this squatted dog is transverse process eye of the squatted dog is pedicle now ear of the squatted dog is superior articular facet front leg of the squatted dog is inferior articular facet body of the squatted dog is lamina inner leg of the squatted dog is spinous process and the neck is a pars interarticularis right so is the normal anatomy of the squatted dog we have to remember it okay yes here is the normal anatomy eye is made up of pedicle nose transverse process ear is made up of articular superior articular process front leg is made up of inferior articular process neck is a pars interarticularis body is made up of lamina and spinous process hind leg will be made up of inferior articular process and uh, tail is made up of superior articular process of opposite side so it was all about oblique view right now let's talk about the interpretation of the lumbar spine x ray so you can we can use abcd approach adkc alignment body body cortical outlines disc spacing and edges and soft tissues right adkc means all the lumbar vertebrae should be present in the spine x ray lumbar spine x ray no one should be missing right and the uh, uh, shadow of the film should be adequate it should be clearly visible we can we can easily differentiate between different vertebrae then we have to look for the alignment and the body cortical outlines disc spacing edges and soft tissues 
Now we approach in the interpretation. Step one, we have to inspect for the loss of vertebral height. Step two is inspect for the intervertebral disc space height. Step three, inspect the vertebral end plates. Step four, inspect the posterior ele elements. So this is the common approach. Okay, so we can divide the vertebra into three compartments. First is three columns. First is anterior column. Which is made up of anterior longitudinal ligament, anterior annulus, and anterior two third of vertebral body. Then middle column will be made up of posterior one third of the vertebral body, posterior annulus, and posterior longitudinal ligament. And the posterior column, posterior most column will be made up of posterior elements, pedicles, facets, lamina, spinous process, and posterior longitudinal ligaments. So these are the structures present in the different columns. Okay, so first of all, we will talk about the alignment. In a normal uh, X-rays, in a normal person X-ray, there is a equal alignment, right? There is a normal alignment in the vertebrae, in frontal view and lateral view. Here you can see there is a no interruption of a alignment line. There is a no interruption in the white line, which is showing a normal alignment on both the X-rays, right? If there is an inter interruption present between this line, if the line is break. at any point then there is a misalignment of the vertebra and it is suggesting some deformity or damage right okay so here is the misalignment in which you can see there is a interruption at the l4 l5 level there is a interruption of the alignment line at the l4 l5 level on the left side it is a normal alignment if you draw a line then there is a no interruption present right everything is in position in ap view or in frontal view you have to look for the shape of vertebrae if the wedging is present or not due to fracture or osteoporosis wedging means your vertebra will become wedge shape right normally it is like a rectangle or square shape or hourglass shape but in wedging it will look like a wedge shape it can cause due to fracture or osteoporosis then you have to look for the intervertebral disc space height which might be reduced or normal right normal will be like this but reduced will be like thin then you have to look for the vertebral deformity especially hemi vertebra or a incomplete development of the lumbar vertebrae then bamboo spine in a case of ankylosing spondylitis then lumbarization and sacralization fractures evidence of spina bifida and osteoporosis so these are the things that you have to look in the frontal view right without missing in lateral view you have to look for the spondylosis and spondylolisthesis what is spondylosis it is a degenerative changes in the lumbar spine and spondylolisthesis is a uh, slippage of the vertebra right on the adjacent vertebra then you have to look for the normal spine curvature normal lumbar spine curvature is lordotic or a lordosis then you have to look for the wedging a uh, present or absent then disc space reduce or normal alignment of the vertebra disruption of the curve may indicate spinal instability and osteophyte formation what is osteophyte osteophyte is a extra bone growth right if this is a vertebra then an extra bone growth will represent as a osteophytes in oblique you you have to look for the evidence of spondylolisthesis what is spondylolisthesis it is a slippage of vertebra on the adjacent vertebra sometimes referred to as a scotty dog decapitated uh, that means interruption in the scotty dog right normally scotty dog is a complete but in case of spondylolisthesis there will be a scotty dog decapitated or a spondylolysis that means breakdown of the fracture of the pars interarticularis sometimes referred to as a scotty dog with collar right okay so here there is a scotty dog with a collar in spondylolysis that means there is a breakage in the scotty dog neck right there is interruption in the scotty dog neck but everything is in position there is no misalignment but there is a breakage at the pars interarticularis fracture of pars interarticularis so it is known as scotty dog with collar in case of spondylolysis and in case of spondylolysis spondylolisthesis there is a scotty dog decapitated here you can see the scotty dog is scotty dog is breaking down and the vertebra is shifting anteriorly right so you can see a space between two fragments so it is scotty dog decapitated right inter now x-rays of various condition so we have learned the normal x-ray anatomy now we will learn about the abnormal x-rays of different conditions first of all lumbar spondylosis so it is an age related degeneration of vertebral column also known as spinal osteoarthritis 
so we know that the common symptoms of the osteoarthritis are reduced disc reduced joint space right in key, in this case there will be a reduced intervertebral intervertebral space what are the findings in spondylo spondylosis disc space narrowing osteophytes formation and subarticular sclerosis sclerosis means thickening of the bone which will appear as a whitish shadow right so you have to look for these signs in a spondylo spondylosis okay here you can see a spondylosis x-ray lateral view first of all you have to determine the view here is the lateral view here you can see a uh, osteophytes white arrows then there is a reduction in the intervertebral intervertebral disc space right here you can see a reduction right then you can see a sclerosis here you can see a white margin at the vertebral end plate so there is a thickening of the bone in that part right here you can see a reduced disc space here are the extra bone growths that are osteophytes right and there is a sclerosis of the vertebral margins and the last is frontal view right here you can see that uh, space is almost reduced right there is a severe sclerosis whitening of the bone thickening of the bone and there is a multiple osteophytes now what are smorol nodes smorol node refer to the type of spinal disc herniation involving the protrusion of the soft tissue of the vertebral intervertebral disc into adjacent vertebra so what happen in smorol node is your disc will be protrude inside the vertebra right generally it will protrude out of the vertebra like this but in what happens in smorol nodes it will protrude inside the vertebra right here you can see a pitted structure representing this moral node right here you can see a pitted structure representing this moral node which is representing intravertebral disc protrusion or herniation which is a very common finding yes here you can see pitted structure basically what happen is disc will protrude from the posterior side right like this here is here is your vertebra but it will protrude on the protrude on the posterior side but there is a intravertebral protrusion in the smorol nodes which will appear as a nodular structure yes peter structure now ankylosing spondylitis so it is a form of chronic inflammatory arthritis so there will be a, so you have to look for the certain changes there are many changes present in the x ray of ankylosing spondylitis so you have to look for the loss of lumbar lordosis abnormal that is abnormal straightening of the spine erosion at the corner of vertebral bodies shiny corner sign vertebral body squaring bamboo spine marginal sin desmophytes linear ossification that is dagger spine at a interspinous ligament ossification right okay here you can see there is a presence of sin desmophyte these are the sin desmophyte which will merge with the adjacent vertebras and it will lock your spine right then you have to look for the shiny corner sign if you look at the corners of this vertebra then it is appearing as shiny right shiny then there is a loss of lumbar lordosis here you can see your spine is abnormally straightened and there is a interlocking of the vertebral bodies right and your spine will become stiff then there is a loss of erosion at the corner of the vertebral bodies marginal sin desmophyte bamboo spine here you can see a bamboo spine your spine is completely straight and everything is merged right like a bamboo there is a interconnection in bamboos it will appear like a bamboo yellow color arrows are sin desmophytes yes here you can see both vertebra is merging with each other each other due to sin desmophytes and osteophytes and it will cause a lock lockening of the spine your spine will be locked and stiff dagger sign which is ossification of the interspinous ligament it will appear like a dagger like a like this you can see a vertical line that is a dagger sign in or enclosing spondylitis now spondylolysis that is a pars defect or a breakage of the pars interarticularis here you can see a easily in a superior view breakage at the pars interarticularis and here is the lateral view if the pars is in breakdown then your vertebra will shift anteriorly or either posteriorly right 
so it is a stress fracture through the pars interarticularis of the lumbar vertebra so again you it is easily observable in the oblique view you have to look for this scotty dog here you can see a very white arrows right here the everything is in alignment right there is a no misalignment so we can say that it is a scotty dog with collar right here there is a breakage in the pars interarticularis stress fracture at the neck of scotty dog yes here it is clearly visible oblique view what is spondylolisthesis spondylolisthesis occurs when a vertebra occurs when a one of the vertebra in the spine slips forward and out of the place here let's say here is the normal vertebra right but what happen in spondylolisthesis one of will vertebra will shift forward on the adjacent vertebra like this it will displace forward out of the place slippage of one vertebral body with respect to adjacent vertebral body it is a spondylolisthesis so there are total two types of spondylolisthesis observable on x ray first is degenerative spondylolisthesis in which your pars interarticularis will be intact right and there is a second is adult isthmic spondylolisthesis in which slippage due to the pars fracture right so in in degenerative pars will be intact and in isthmic slippage due to pars fracture your vertebra will slip forward or backward generally most commonly it will forward anteriorly yes here you can see here is the lateral view uh, l5 is slipped anteriorly on the s1 here is your sacrum here is your l5 which is shifted anteriorly right so again you have to look for the alignment here you can see there is interruption in the line interruption in the line right normally it should be like this but there is a interruption in the line which is showing misalignment or instability here are the grades of slippage grade 1 is the low less slippage and grade 5 is the extreme slippage your vertebra will slip totally anteriorly right uh, degenerative spondylolisthesis it is a common degenerative condition characterized by subluxation of one vertebral body anteriorly to the adjacent one inferior vertebral body with intact pars your pars interarticularis will be intact but there will be a slight slippage of the vertebral bodies here is the lateral view of uh, degenerative spondylolisthesis you have to again look for the alignment right here the alignment here there is a misalignment here there is a interruption of the line right is the vertebra is shifted anteriorly right misalignment of the line isthmic spondylolisthesis there is a fracture of the pars it is caused by the defect in the pars interarticularis also known as pars defect right so here you can see there is a fracture at the pars interarticularis and it is causing a slippage anteriorly subluxation of one vertebral body anterior to the adjacent inferior vertebral body now here we are talking about a flexion extension view so flexion extension views are generally used for to check the spinal stability right so here, there is a flexion view revealing the pars fracture here there is extension view normal extension lateral view but when the patient is asked to do a flexion then the pars fracture is easily visible here you can see a breakage right here you can see a pars fracture which is po possible to observe in flexion view right but it is not completely visible here in lateral view so this is the importance of flexion view and uh, spine extension here is the importance of extension view right so here is the normal x ray right spine extension reducing the slippage in normal in the left side upright flexion there is a slippage of the vertebra showing the spondylolisthesis but when the patient is doing spine extension the slippage is getting reduced right here you can see there is a re reduction in the slippage here there is a slippage more you can see a yellow horizontal line here there is a great slippage and here the slippage is reduced in extension so these are the importance of flexion and extension view it will provide the data of spinal instability now what is lumbarization lumbarization is the also known as lumbarization of s1 vertebra is the separation of s1 from the sacrum 
it is a separation of s1 from the sacrum s1 segment will appear as a independent vertebra or a l6 vertebra it is due to failure of fusion of s1 with s2 right so it is lumbarization s1 will act as a l6 or a independent lumbar vertebra extra lumbar vertebra due to failure of fusion of s1 and s2 here you can see if you can count a lumbar vertebra in lateral view here is the l6 l4 l5 l4 l3 l2 and l1 right uh, okay in the frontal view it is easily visible l6 extra l6 vertebra is present it is a generally a s1 vertebra which is present due to the failure of fusion of s1 and s2 right you can count in upward direction using a upward and downward method now what is sacralization it is a fusion of l5 or a part of l5 with the sacrum so generally a sacralization is fusion of l5 with a sacrum either a part or a complete fusion mainly its transverse process gets fused or a semi fused with sacrum or ilium or both right commonly transverse process fusion will be present okay here you can see there is a fusion of the transverse process of l5 here you can see a linkage here there is a free here there is a gap there is no fusion normal and on the in this side there is a fusion you can see a connection that is sacralization transverse process is getting fused with this sacrum or a ilium skewer means disorder okay so it is a it is a disorder in which you have to look for the wedging of the vertebrae here you can see the vertebrae is getting a shape like this wedge shape right then you have to look for this morals nodules that is intravertebral disc herniation peated structure will be present and uh, disc space narrowing here you can see a disc space is getting reduced right if you look at the disc space it is reduced and damage end plates end plates will be present on the margins of vertebral bodies on the superior side and inferior side end plate will be damaged so these are the squirmen disorder findings in the lateral view then there is a facet joint arthritis okay so you have to look for the facet joint in frontal view and lateral view so in arthritis there will be a sclerosis and calcification so it will appear as a brightish white structure it will look more white at the facet joint hemi vertebra it is a rare congenital spinal malformation where only one side of the vertebral body develops so it is the incomplete development of the vertebral body resulting in deformation of spine such as scoliosis kyphosis and lordosis it appears as a triangular bony structure smaller than a regular vertebra acting like a wedge against the adjacent vertebra right if this is a complete vertebra then what is hemi vertebra it is like this incomplete development of the vertebral body congenital anomaly okay here you can see this is hemi vertebra right it is a triangular piece and it will cause a deformity of the spinal curvature due to triangular it can cause a scoliosis and here are the types of uh, ma vertebrae right here you can see incomplete development of the vertebral body resulting in spinal deformity in x ray here you can see a small fragment triangular fragment right and there is a scoliosis s shaped curvature of the spine right that is ma vertebrae okay here it is visible ma vertebrae here there is a incomplete development of the vertebral body and it is causing scoliosis right okay here you can see there is a incomplete development here at the l5 level which is resulting in a scoliosis which is not visible in lateral view right it is, scoliosis will be visible in frontal view only now what is scoliosis abnormal s shape curvature scoliosis defined as a curvature of the spine in frontal or in a coronal plane scoliosis will be visible in frontal plane like this in this plane right normal spine will have a no visible curvature in frontal plane but natural curvature will be seen in sagittal plane right a sagittal plane will represent a lateral side of the human body and frontal will plane right will be present on the front side okay here you can see here you can see a frontal plane in which there will be a normal spinal alignment straight spine is visible and there is a scoliosis which is visible in frontal plane 
एस शेप कर्वेचर राइट इट माइट नॉट बी विजिबल इन लेटर व्यू ओके इर इज दी एक्स रे इमेजेस नॉर्मल अलाइनमेंट ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड फ्रंटल व्यू एंड लेटरल व्यू एंड स्कोलियोटिक स्पाइन हियर यू कैन सी अ सीवियर एस शेप शेप कर्वेचर राइट इन लेटरल व्यू यू कैन इट इज विजिबल नॉट कंप्लीटली विजिबल बट यू कैन सी अ शेडो ऑफ द बोन्स राइट फ्रंटल व्यू इज द चॉइस कैन बी यूज फॉर द इमेजिंग ऑफ स्कोलियोसिस देन लंबार कंप्रेशन फ्रैक्चर्स कंप्रेशन If you fall from height directly on the pelvis, then it will cause a compression of the lumbar vertebra, right? And it will cause a compression fracture. Here you can see a compression. Compression is represented by loss of height, right? Compression fracture will be represented by loss of height, vertebral body height. So you have to compare the normal vertebral body height with the compressed fra compressed fracture, compressed segment. That is loss of height, sign of a compression fracture. Here you can see. you can compare with this and this here there is a loss of height okay here it is visible yes in x ray of the lateral view here you can see compression fracture loss of vertebral body height important sign of compression fracture you have to compare with the normal vertebrae then lumbar bust fracture bust fracture will result in a comminuted fracture of vertebral body again there will be a loss of height of the vertebral body right here you can see a multiple bone fragments and there is a loss of height <coughs> it will also cause a bone displacement or a misalignment due to the fragments right fragments will separate will get separated and it will cause a misalignment of the spine here is the la front lateral view and here is the frontal view reduced vertebral body height due to bust fracture and there is a fragment of bones now chance fracture it is a flexion distraction or a seat belt injury it is caused by hyperflexion of the spine during a road traffic accident so there is a split horizontal split will be present right it will it will cause a it will be caused by the flexion of the spine hyperflexion of the spine right so in in anterior part there will be a compression and in posterior part there will be a distraction in anterior part there will be a compression and in posterior part there will be a distraction you can see horizontal split here on the lateral view representing the chance fracture and there is a loss of vertebral body height osteoporosis that is a reduced bone density right uh, so when the bone density will be reduced it will appear as a dark shed of the bone here you can see the bone is appearing somewhat gray the gray generally bone will appear as a white white structure right normal density but in osteoporosis it will appear as a gray structure due to reduced bone density as we have discussed earlier less density will re reflect a grayer shadow on the x-ray film right less density gray shadow high density white shadow okay here is the image of posterior laminectomy post operative laminectomy and pedicle screw fixation So there is the image of a screw metal metal implants are placed in lumbar vertebra so as we have discussed earlier that a metal will appear as a bright white shadow because metal has a high density it will appear as a bright white right here you can see you can easily differentiate between metals and a bones it is appearing as a bright white structure right so it was all about uh, lumbar spine x-ray interpretation right we have discussed a uh, four views flex uh, oblique lateral view frontal view oblique view and flexion extension view right okay it was all about lumbar spine accident interpretation thank you